జ్యోతి నువ్వు వెనకాల నుంచి కనబడుతున్నావమ్మా ఎటు ఒకసార్ కూర్చో a very good evening to everybody uh, we are little regretful related to the late uh, start of today's event uh, due to some technical issues of connectivity and internet uh, we couldn't start at 6 so i really apologize for that particular part uh, but uh, a sincere uh, welcome to everybody Uh, from uh, Sri Ram Krishna Institute of Computer Education and Applied Sciences, uh, as well as Sarvajanik University, based at Surat. Uh, today, we are starting a lecture series in biotechnology with one of the most important and elite topic, that is tilapia culture, with our today's uh, expert guest, Dr. Surya Prakash Rao. so uh, sh- uh, before i ask sir to uh, share his uh, you know uh, expertise in tilapia culture let me tell you all related to uh, who he is exactly and uh, what is his background all about so you are going to listen to a person who has more than 30 years of experience in aquaculture and uh, different fields uh, relevant to aquaculture he started his uh, professional life as a master of fishery science from university of agriculture science bangalore thereafter he did his uh, phd in fish processing technology again uh, from the same university university of Ag- agriculture science bangalore and uh, there was no looking back thereafter he was uh, the one who worked as senior operations manager general manager uh, at number of different companies uh, whether it is elza marine and harvest limited or it is uh, grow point ocean food uh, malaysia or it is devi seafood limited andhra pradesh he also also has uh, worked in area as a, a, a aquaculture expertise uh, for many many years and has established this tilapia culture over there he also works with catfish as another uh, you know group of organism for the same purpose that is to establish the cultural systems for nigeria uh, he was also working as an executive vice president plant operational person for west coast frozen foods private limited surat for again a long period of time and we are very grateful that whenever we had asked sir for the students visit he has always been so humble and welcoming uh, for students for this particular uh, processing unit so uh, people we are meeting a person who holds an expertise in strategic business planning seafood and food processing industry apart from uh, different particular uh, aspects of uh, you no know, aquaculture like uh, uh, how to take care of freshwater cage, cages and ras systems and earthen ponds and uh, how you are going to include stocking and acclimatization techniques and also he is very sound in handling the guidelines uh, with respect to the aquaculture products that is hacccp implementation and uh, how you are going to handle your pro no product uh, abroad so bringing you a person who is a package of not only academic aspects of aquaculture but who also knows how to implement them in practical uh, aspects and uh, see to it that that particular product re- reaches to the right consumers at right moment uh, in the right perspective so a uh, warm welcome to you sir for uh, being a part of today's uh, you know this particular session and we are very grateful and delighted to have you on our uh, srki educational resources youtube channel for our young minds so we appreciate your uh, no time and energy that you spend uh, every time we welcome you for some program there is no no actually uh, sir ke sath planning hui thi ke do din baad inka schedule tha but because he is having a europe tour so we rescheduled and we pre pond usually postponed hota hai but sir ke case mein pre pond hua and sir agreed so uh, he is a very humble 
person and uh, hope you are going to have good time listening to his expertise on tilapia uh, culture so he'll be sharing his views on the case study of tilapia how they developed uh, that particular system in nigeria sir the floor is open to you i'll share the slides for you and uh, you can continue talking about the culture system Uh, thank you. I uh, am very honored to be part of this uh, lecture series organized by Sri Ramakrishna Institute and uh, Sarvajanik University. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, uh, I, I love to speak to the students and uh, discuss with them. Often very enterprising students come up with novel ideas which we have implemented uh, in the field. So uh, cage culture, perhaps uh, we have started in India way back in 2007, 2006. Uh, in fact, uh, I have worked uh, in the cage uh, designs in Nagpur uh, and then uh, in uh, various other dams of Maharashtra where we have put in these cages. Uh, so uh, go to the first slide. I will give you a version of Indian as well as what happened in Nigeria. So in Africa, especially in Nigeria, which comes in West Africa, uh, for protein, fish is a very important part of the diet and African catfish, Clarius garipinus, and tilapia, which is known as Oreochromis niloticus. This is also cultured and uh, both can be cultured in cages. Next slide. Uh, so, in uh, West Africa, this uh, stallion group uh, is one of the largest players in uh, having foot, uh, footfalls in Nigeria and Ghana. And uh, we are into various uh, other uh, operations also. But uh, aquaculture has been started there primarily to take care of the protein requirements of the people. Next slide, please. So Mr. Sunil Vasmani is the chairman and uh, with uh, various awards which have been given to the group. Uh, this is one of the largest Indian conglomerates in Nigeria, providing a lot of employment, generating revenue, generating the, uh, what should I say, export uh, revenue by way of uh, getting dollars for the country also from various businesses. So next slide. Coming to the aquaculture part of it, uh, premium aquaculture went into it in 2015 and uh, the Nigerian government wanted to, you know, Nigeria is one of the petroleum, uh, uh, one of the, it is part of the OPEC group and uh, they produce a lot of uh, uh, crude. They are, I think, uh, the sixth largest producer in the world. But uh, the most of, in Africa, there is a lot of pilferage and uh, very little comes into the, the uh, what should I say, the money comes to the people. Unlike you, Gulf, where you see the Saudi, UAE and all the uh, revenues to a large extent uh, come to the population. And as such, the uh, living conditions are much better there. But in Nigeria, it's the other way around. Next slide, please. So the government has been uh, encouraging agriculture and uh, aquaculture in Nigeria. So uh, many of these uh, uh, commercial, this is a commercial uh, aquaculture unit. We are producing uh, uh, tilapia and uh, catfish. Uh, the tilapia is produced from almost 250 cages with an investment of uh, 3.7 million US dollars. And uh, another $8 million has been invested in catfish ponds. The total project is uh, over two mil 12 million US dollars. And uh, uh, today, uh, the catfish as well as the tilapia, which is produced there, is sold locally. Everything is sold locally, uh, produced by the Nigerians and uh, consumed by the Nigerians. Next slide, please. So if you Look at the overview. Uh, the tilapia 
culture in Africa is dominated by the Egyptians. Uh, the Egypt produces large volume of uh, um, tilapia in ponds. It is not cage cultured. It is uh, produced in um, ponds, earthen ponds. And they have only one season because the winter is quite severe. Uh, say from uh, October till February, March, they cannot do any culture. So they have only one um, season for culture of uh, tilapia. And uh, uh, the other major producers are uh, uh, Kenya, uh, Ghana, Madagascar, Tunisia and all that. Okay, come to the next slide. In Nigeria, if you look at the Africa as a whole, Nigeria is the most populous country. And uh, uh, by virtue of being uh, like China and India, the most uh, pop, uh, population being present, the per capita consumption and the ability to buy is much high in Nigeria. So when you talk of Africa, you cannot forget Nigeria and do business in the whole continent. You have to have a footprint in Nigeria. And uh, in Nigeria, with almost 50% of the population being uh, uh, Christians and 50% being Muslims, uh, both, the, both the sectors consume fish. And uh, per capita consumption is around 13.3 kilo per person per year. Whereas uh, the total production of fish from aquaculture is around 300,000 met metric tons. And uh, capture fisheries is another 750,000 metric tons. Okay, so you cannot compare this with India where the total production is 12 million metric tons and above. Uh, Majority of the fish which is consumed in uh, Nigeria is uh, catfish and uh, tilapia and a little bit of uh, sea caught material which uh, is caught by the trawlers. So most of the international agencies, whether it is FAO, World Fish, uh, Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation, all are working towards increasing the aquaculture in Nigeria and uh, providing uh, livelihood as well as protein for them. Next slide, please. It has a population, uh, Nigeria has a population of uh, 186 million people and uh, the total fish required is 2.47 million metric tons, whereas Today, there is a deficit of fish availability to the tune of 1.4 million metric tons. So, most of the fish that is required for local consumption is imported in the form of frozen pelagic fish from Europe. Next slide, please. Nigeria also has a very vast land uh, area available. And if you look at the northern part of Nigeria, touching towards Chad, Niger and all, is pretty cold. So, uh, in the they also can do aquaculture only for one crop. That is from October to uh, February, March is known as the Harmatan season, the dry season. And uh, the temperatures fall to as much as plus 10 to plus 8 degrees centigrade. So water temperature also correspondingly drops and uh, at lower temperatures the fish can only survive but cannot grow and as the FCR increases, food conversion ratio increases, it becomes economically not viable to culture fish in the uh, winter season. But Nigeria has a lot of rivers, lakes, dams which can be profitably used for aquaculture and now slowly, uh, one by one, the dams are being utilized for cage culture. And also some of the dams slowly have been put into operation for pro producing hydroelectric energy. Next slide, please. 
Uh, this gives the coastline and the water bodies uh, available there in the Nigeria. Next slide, please. Now, when we do think of cage culture, what we need to do is look at suitable water bodies, dams, which have adequate depth, where the water flow is good, and we can fabricate cages using local material like GI pipes or HDPE pipes. And we can use the flotation techniques by using empty uh, 200 liter barrels, plastic barrels or 25 liter uh, jerry cans. There are various methods. You can, we can have low density, high volume cages of one, one meter into one meter into one meter size, or we can have bigger cages of six meters into six meters, we can still have bigger cages of 16 meter diameter, which we will show you as we go along. Uh, and the product, whatever produce is there, we need to look at what is the area where we are producing tilapia and how far we have to transport it to the market. So that needs to take into consideration. If it is going as fresh chill, then we must have the facility for icing the product and transporting the same to the markets. Otherwise, the product is to be frozen and then kept in the cold store and using the cold chain, it has to be transported to different cold stores in the country and then distributed. Next slide. So these are some of the typical cages in zigzag uh, position. This is the most uh, latest way of doing it uh, with uh, one side having a large walkway of one meter and the other sides having only 18 inches of walkway. Uh, and positioning it in a zigzag manner enables the water flow from all the four sides and thereby increasing productivity. So uh, these uh, cages were deployed in, at Voyon Dam in Abaikuta. Uh, this is uh, uh, having a total length of 27 kilometers with 6 kilometer width and a catchment area of 9,000 square kilometers uh, from, uh, a uh, from what should I say, the rainwater. It is a tributary from Ogun River and uh, it is operated by Ogun Osun River Basin Development Authority. Uh, just like in India, all the water bodies are uh, handled by either PWD or the dam authorities. The same principle applies in Africa also. Next slide, please. So the first thing for establishing a cage culture is we need, we need to have a good source of fingerlings. That means we first have to establish a hatchery. To establish a hatchery, we need maybe around eight acres to 10 acres of land where we can put 0.2 to 0.15 meter, uh, point, uh, sorry, 1,500 to 2,000 meters of uh, ponds, which we can use for broodstock holding, for fingerling, for sex reversal, so on and so forth. So uh, soil survey has been done and uh, the pond construction was done way back in 2015. Next slide, please. So typically, like how we do the uh, shrimp, uh, shrimp ponds, I'm sure most of the students in Surat would have gone and seen the shrimp ponds. So it is more or less sim similar. Next slide, please. So the water has been uh, pumped from the dam directly using a pump, uh, 25 HP pump. You can see the small hut there uh, floating uh, uh, where we have deployed and the water comes directly into the ponds. Uh, they are rectangle shaped ponds for easy uh, flow of water and uh, adequate length for the fishes to swim and be active. And uh, on the other side will be the drain canal. Next slide, please. This gives a overview of our uh, uh, tilapia hatchery. You can see the small, small nets being deployed there. These are uh, the uh, breeding uh, uh, cages and the uh, 
sex reversal cages. So the last uh, uh, ponds what you see, they are the broodstock ponds and uh, uh, you see the full length of uh, from that side first second third fourth fifth pond is where uh, we are doing the breeding and collecting the uh, fry directly from there and bringing it to the uh, sex river, uh, reversal pond which you have the small small cage nets in the second and uh, first uh, uh, pond next slide please so this is typically how it looks uh, where we are doing the sex reversal and uh, holding on to the fingerlings. Uh, this hatchery has a capacity of 9 million fry per annum with a brood stock of around uh, uh, 8 to 10,000 uh, brood stocks uh, out of which around 5,000 to uh, numbers will be uh, females, around 4,000 will be males. Next so, sir, I, I would like to ask a question here. Uh, you are yeah. talking about sex reversal. So, can you give a little more detail on how do you manage to do that? Because for our students, this is a very new area. They know that sex reversal can be done, but practically, how you do it in the hatcheries? Yeah, there is a male hormone used, and uh, in the subsequent mm -hmm. ones, I will tell you, it is there in the as a part of. Hello, can you hear? Yeah, yeah, I can hear now. You got freezed for a while. No problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what happens is uh, normally when we put the breeding pair, uh, we put around uh, 100 uh, females in one hapa with uh, 50 males. And uh, once, say, today we have put it. Then after seventh day, the uh, the brood stock mate naturally and uh, you know tilapia has a habit of holding on to the eggs in the mouth the mother will hold the eggs in the mouth and they will start hatching once they start hatching on the eighth day we lift the hapa remove the females and open the mouth just put little water all the babies will come out and that is scooped using a something like a net uh, like our tea filter ka jo net hota hai usi hisab ka bada net hota hai usse hum log filter karke we remove the two day and three day old spawn okay. so this is taken and then for the next 21 days 17 alpha methyl testosterone is mixed in the feed at a particular dosage and then given along with the feed for 21 to 25 days depending on the uh, water temperature. Mm. Mm. So at the end of this three weeks to 25 days, we will get 95 to 98 percent all male tilapia. What happens is in commercial cage culture, we try to have all male so that uh, phenotypically they put on weight and uh, it will be commercial sell a higher weight uh, the male will be typically weighing uh, in six months time 600 grams to 700 grams whereas the female will utilize the energy whatever food we it is giving no, it is given to breed so mm. as the energy goes towards breeding the fish will weigh less. It will be only um, 350 grams to 400 grams. Mm -hmm. So typically, to have a higher weight fish, it is uh, as soon as they are born, they are giving they are given male hormone to ensure that all male population is obtained to as mm -hmm. uh, as much as possible. That is 95 percent to 98 percent. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Yeah, so for 20 kg of feed, 
20 grams of vitamin C is added as well as 1.2 grams of hormone 17 methyl alpha methyl testosterone is added at 60 ppm level this is uh, 0 0.06 grams of hormone per kg of fry feed and in winter months again as the temperature drops we will increase the dosage okay many people are apprehensive that uh, what will happen to uh, the residual level of hormone in the meat a mm. um, lot of studies have been done uh, that uh, the male hormone which is there in the flesh within uh, two months or two and a half months it uh, uh, goes out of the system and you do an analysis there is nothing found in the tissue so there is nothing uh, wrong in consuming this uh, male hormone fish. treated okay. uh, uh, fish sex mm. reversed fish uh, these apprehensions have come because uh, uh, from the poultry industry where a lot of uh, hormones are used, a lot of uh, antibiotics are used. Um, there has been a uh, uh, lot of uh, literature, scientific study which has proved that uh, the kids who are consuming this are uh, especially um, uh, girls. They are maturing faster, they are uh, developing more hair. Uh, these are all the negative effects which they have seen from the poultry industry and as such today a lot of uh, um, research has been done in the aquaculture uh, to ensure that uh, those mistakes are not repeated again um, in this field next slide mm. please now you see on the first uh, uh, slide this is what i said uh, uh, like a you know, coffee filter, they all the fry are collected, uh, weighed, and also if it is to be transported uh, to a different location, oxygen pack is done uh, the, in the right side uh, slide and then transported uh, to a long distance. So also, uh, 24 hours, nothing will happen. Next slide. <laughs> so uh, when we are transporting uh, fry, uh, care is taken to see that... Uh, uh, feeding is not done and uh, on an empty stomach uh, enough oxygen um, half there, there is around five liters of water and uh, a 10 liter space uh, is used for uh, putting in the oxygen just similar to what you would have seen in the shrimp farm post larvae 10 15 is transported uh, from south india all the way to surat nothing happens uh, you, in 24 hours uh, they are able to withstand the transportation only thing is care to be taken that temperature is kept uh, uh, at an acceptable level of 20 to 20 degrees centigrade. Next slide, please. Uh, so you see there are two different types of cages. Uh, what you see on the top left is uh, the uh, HDB cages being fabricated. And uh, uh, we use uh, boys and uh, ropes to uh, take it along and then moor it using sinkers. Uh, everything is done by the local population even here in nigeria so am i audible or have i gone off the air madam oh no you are audible sir you are audible okay. yeah so uh, even in uh, india you see now most of the places uh, in maharashtra you have in uh, madhya pradesh uh, a lot of places uh, andhra tamil nadu kerala um, Urissa, all these places now have deployed cages, both in the dams as well as in uh, 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 estuarine cages, sea cages for fish culture. Next slide, please. Uh, this is again a uh, tilapia hatchery uh, uh, showing uh, if you double click on this. Uh, Yeah. Are you able to see the video? No, there is there wasn't any video link, sir. It was just okay. the PPTs. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. That is fine. Yeah. Yeah. So you have aeration in the ponds uh, with paddle wheels, especially in the night time, because if the oxygen level drops to less than uh, two milligrams or two point five milligrams uh, per liter, then uh, there is mass mortality. Next slide, please. So if you see the tilapia production in uh, uh, Nigeria, 
uh, we have uh, done right from 700 uh, metric tons to 1200 metric tons uh, today as we speak on 2023 we have already crossed uh, 1600 uh, metric tons of uh, uh, tilapia and uh, today after the covid thing uh, the uh, prices have gone uh, to as much as uh, uh, 1500 uh, naira per kilo which is almost uh, uh, three and a half to four dollars uh, i have not mm -hmm. put in the data for 22 and 23 because it's an abnormal data because of uh, uh, covid situation uh, mm. but yes uh, because of covid um, one good thing that has come out of it is people have said you better eat more of shrimp more of uh, uh, fish uh, which uh, helps in boosting your uh, immune system <laughs> Uh, whereas, uh, if you look at uh, tilapia sale prices in India, uh, it is uh, hovering around uh, 90 rupees per kilo to 120 rupees a kilo uh, in most of the markets. In some retail markets, you get a price of 150 rupees, which is still below the Katla Rohu sale price of 160 to 180 rupees in the market. So, it is a low priced fish in India, whereas it's a high priced fish in Nigeria and Egypt. Mm -hmm. Next slide, please. So here it is uh, cost of production um, uh, given uh, uh, at each stage uh, where it is uh, 8 naira for the 2 gram fry, thereafter 40 naira and then if you look at uh, cost of labor is more petrol and electricity is not there other than what you use for uh, petrol and diesel for your boats uh, then uh, main thing is the feed feed cost comes to almost 80 percent to 85 percent of the total cost and feed mm -hmm. is a little more expensive in nigeria because most of the ingredients like soya meal maize etc is imported fish meal uh, whereas in india the cost of uh, feed is much much lower uh, here you get the feed for um, uh, anywhere between 42 rupees to 60 rupees a kg at different sizes uh, whereas in uh, Nigeria the cost of feed itself is very high um, uh, here it is uh, coming to 80 cents to 60 cents whereas in Nigeria it is uh, double the cost so the net profit is uh, almost uh, 50 cents per kg way back in 21 but today it stands at almost 1.2 dollars in Nigeria but in India Still, the profit margin is only 40, 30 to 40 rupees a kilo for tilapia. And uh, for bigger sizes, when you do fillet, the people say the margin will be better. But uh, India is unable to compete with China where the fillet is produced and uh, uh, sold in the international markets at uh, as low as 80 cents to $1.2. Whereas, um, next slide, please. You see, the moment the tilapia is... Um, uh, fillet, where you make a fillet of tilapia, you get a yield of only 33%. So uh, the cost will uh, more than double when you, uh, if it is a 120 rupees uh, tilapia, the moment you fillet and you get a 33% uh, uh, yield, the cost of uh, fillet is as to as much uh, as uh, uh, 250 rupees a kilo. So this is a GI pipeline uh, cage of 6 into 6 meters fabricated uh, by just using a welder. It's a very simple design using mm -hmm. 200 liters barrels as a uh, uh, flotation uh, mechanism. Only thing is we have to tighten those caps and put uh, uh, adhesive there so that the water will not enter. Uh, beautifully can take the load. It can withstand the waves. It can withstand the pressure of water being released from the dam etc so sir how did you uh, manage to design this particular concept you know, with such uh, a low uh, cost effective barrels and there has to be some thought behind it that this is how we will use these materials to plan the whole thing uh, ma'am we have to either learn from others experiences <laughs> or we have to uh, start from scratch and do uh, yeah. here I had uh, traveled to China, I have traveled to mm -hmm. Thailand, 
I have traveled to uh, Malaysia where the low cost designs were available. We, mm. After studying the various designs, we have modified a little bit to suit Indian conditions. And now today, wherever you go, you will see this six meter into six meter being popularly used as a lot of it from 2006, seven to almost till 2010, a lot of research has happened, not only by Indipesca firm where I was working in Mumbai, uh, but also with uh, participation from Empada, uh, participation from US Soybean Association, from USA, um, World Fish People. And then uh, we, this design, what uh, I have done here uh, is a copy of a little bit design from China, a little bit from Vietnam, uh, a little bit from uh, Thailand and Indianized to meet our uh, requirements. So that's what has happened. Next slide, please. Way back in 2007, that cage, 6 into 6 meters cost uh, around 22 to 23,000 rupees, fabricated in Mumbai at uh, Taloja. But today I am told because of uh, cost escalation, it costs around uh, uh, 85,000 rupees today. Only the cage and the net cost will be different. So here it is the cage uh, fabrication cost in uh, US dollars uh, for uh, Nigeria where everything is expensive because it is to be imported. The mm. net cost is uh, 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 even in India, if we want to take uh, uh, net from Garware or any other net manufacturer, there are a lot of uh, net manufacturers even in Gujarat, um, it will come to uh, anywhere between uh, uh, 100 to 150 dollars, not more than that. Um, many people are doing away with the outer net and they are produce, using only a single production net, uh, which is very good in quality and uh, bird net is used to prevent bird. So the total cage cost in uh, Nigeria was around $1,800 to $1,900. But uh, in India, if we do it, uh, the total cost will come down to $1,200. Uh, next, next slide, please. Uh, this is a close-up of the walkway and all. This is a 3mm GI plate, checkered uh, plate so that the grip will be good. Uh, this is 18 inches. And the barrel is uh, fit there. It cannot escape with the waves. Uh, mm. There is an angle there which holds the barrel in position. Next slide, please. So the main thing is uh, uh, to minimize the handling of the fish. The more you handle, the more you touch it. They get, go into stress. Uh, a stocking density of 35 to 40 pieces per cubic meter is good enough. Main thing is to see that there is enough water flow in the dam. Uh, people say around 20, 20 inches uh, per second is of water flow is good. Uh, sorry, per minute. 20 inches to per minute of water flow is good. Uh, and in most of the Indian dams, they meet this criteria. The size of net will vary based upon the cage. The stocking densities are typically vary especially in uh, summer and winter. Winter, we reduce the densities. And in summer, we can increase the densities because the oxygen levels will be better. There is a lot of flow. Even in monsoon season or rainy season, we can increase the densities. The survival will from fingerling of 25 grams to uh, table fish of 600 to 800 grams will be around 85% uh, with a harvest quantity of roughly 3.5 to uh, 3.8 uh, metric uh, tons per cage, that is 3,500 kilos to 3,800 kilos per day with a, a day of culture, the total uh, culture period being 150 to 170 days. Next, next slide, please. <coughs> now, normally, we feed the fish three or four times a day, depending upon the sizes. And mm. uh, carefully, the boy must be, have a scoop net and remove the dead fish as soon as they float. Otherwise, the disease will spread spread inside the inside the cage for which we need to take care. We need to 
give a balanced diet to the uh, tilapia, not too rich uh, food, not too uh, protein rich or too high fat uh, uh, feed. Antibiotics are not to be used. They delay only the mortality, but uh, it will not uh, uh, work uh, actually. Yeah. Fish. So yeah. we can use the probiotics, but uh, not antibiotics. Minimize uh, the disease vectors like birds, snails, and frogs. In the cages, you will not get the frogs and snails. Birds, yes. And uh, don't put too high uh, density because uh, the first crop might be good, but the second crop you will have a problem and then we will have mass mortality. And I have seen mass mortality where uh, 50 cages, 100 cages uh, we have lost overnight. And uh, we had to get a... Um, uh, JCP, dig a big pit and then bury all the fish. It's a loss of a uh, lot of monetary loss. Uh, only bigger firms will be able to sustain that sort of thing. Small farmer will uh, uh, have difficulty. So it is better to have lower densities and have a good crop rather than trying to eat too much um, uh, by stocking too, too many fish in the cages. Uh, and also double nets are not needed, but many of the Indian uh, farmers use double nets. They feel uh, uh, the fish uh, will escape from the main net. It doesn't happen that way. World over, everyone is using single nets. Next slide, please. So, sir, these tilapias, uh, they are prone to what kind of diseases usually? Are they susceptible uh, to any particular kind of uh, bacterial or viral problem? Uh, there is a tilapia virus which is uh, okay. prominent in uh, Ghana, but uh, Nigeria has been safe, um, Indonesia has been safe, Bangladesh has been safe so far. We have not seen this. Certain countries have seen this, even Egypt has seen this disease. So vaccination of fish is another uh, thing with the pharmacy people are advocating to promote their vaccines. But uh, in Nigeria, where we have used gift tilapia, uh, genetically improved uh, tilapia, they, we don't have any disease issues. So we are not using okay. any uh, vaccines. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, best management practice, practices are a sure way of uh, uh, getting controlled uh, production and uh, able to do sustained harvest, uh, having zigzag uh, cages is better as you have seen in the uh, photos. Circular cages of 18 meters die are also used uh, where we uh, have a less stocking density of uh, 20 pieces per meter cube. Uh, and this is uh, very popularly used in Ghana, Tanzania and all where uh, there are a lot of waves in the dam and there is a higher uh, oxygen levels of uh, more than uh, 4 milligram percentage. And also the depths are uh, the Lake Victoria and all are very, very big, uh, very deep. Mm -hmm. So they, they use this. Uh, only we need to take care that uh, the feed bags, polythene, pipes, etc. Dead fish are always removed promptly and are not uh, polluting the uh, surroundings of the cages. Uh, so a lot of training is given to the feed boys and the uh, uh, cage net maintenance uh, staff. Record mm. keep success because we all have to um, ensure that what feed is being given to each cage uh, is noted down. Sampling records, water parameters every day is to be noted. Water temperature, DO, uh, pH and sal uh, salinity if it is uh, in the estuarine areas. Biosecurity measures to be in place. Uh, do not uh, allow each Tom, Dick and Harry to go visit the cages and touch the fish. Mm. Mm. Next slide, please. We need to take precautions uh, on uh, uh, mass mortalities which uh, happen due to upwelling. And uh, this happens in India too, especially when we move from winter to summer. Uh, in these, these months, uh, February, March, April are the critical uh, months where uh, the entire bottom water comes to the top. That is the time when uh, uh, oxygen depletion happens and uh, most of the fish die. 
and uh, as we were discussing uh, discussing what are all the um, diseases that are there this is the tilapia lake virus tilv is uh, one of the most prominent one we also see streptococci a little bit of vibrio but vibrio has not been so prominent vaccinations are the main thing to control them but i would also say that using uh, good uh, gift tilapia uh, will uh, help us in uh, controlling all the diseases grading of fish is very important in each cage we need to have a particular size fish uh, not have too much of variation that is important for getting good growth so that uh, fish will uh, feed uniformly grow uniformly that's important next slide please so sir here uh, if by chance somebody is supposed to do the vaccination what would be the administrative uh, methodology for vaccination via food is a good idea or they actually do the manual injection there there is a small uh, table with uh, what they do is directly from the cages uh, the vaccination is done when the fish is around uh, 50 grams to 100 gram size not for the mm. bigger fishes so at that size uh, from the um, uh, nursery cages or nursery ponds uh, in the hapa they will put all the fish from there there is a small fish pump and it will pump fish onto the table small stainless steel table which is only one feet wide and there uh, once it comes you hold the fish inject release so from other end it goes into the other cage so it is okay. a process where six people stand on the table and then go on vaccinating the fish and releasing it is very tedious very laborious not as easily done um, uh, so vaccination is the last resort here yeah. uh, and i think it must also be very stressful for the fishes to undergo this kind of vaccination yes uh, we in ghana where we have done this sort of thing uh, often we see the within 24 hours we have as much as uh, 10 to 20 percent mortality of fish mm. so losing a hundred gram fish is uh, again a big uh, strain for a farmer so um, one needs to be uh, very very careful in vaccinations yeah. not only in dosage but also in uh, giving stress to the fish Yes. So, sir, there is a question coming up from the uh, students. Uh, they are asking, how can we achieve uniform mass growth? And it might be variable looking to the intake of the food the fish takes. So, uh, how is it possible to have uniform mass uh, you know, growth uh, in, the, in the fishes? Yeah. Now, what happens is uh, there are small, small graders. When uh, fish is one gram, to two gram inside the hatchery and you are transferring it to the nursery cages from two grams to 25 grams we grade them there are small graders with uh, uh, parallel bars uh, uh, with uh, uh, what should i say uh, 4 mm gap 5 mm gap one inch gap like that so the fish will the big uh, the smaller fish will fall through and the bigger fish will remain so there, there are different different grade uh, graders available so we grade the fish manually we grade the fish manually and then put it in different sizes each grade is put in a different nursery cage and allowed to grow to 25 gram size once it attains 25 gram size again if there are any jumbo fish above 25 gram suddenly you see 50 gram fish or 100 gram fish it is taken out and put in separately in that uh, size cage and uniformly this uh, fish are stocked at 3500 to 4000 numbers per cage and when it is harvested at the end of 150 to 175 days you will see most of the fish 70 percent of the population will be around 580 grams to 680 grams the rest of the population you will have below and above that that natural variation will always be there. <laughs> so even in a family, when there are two sons or two daughters, you will see there's a little bit of growth variation. Uh, you, you cannot uh, produce a standard uh, uh, um, fish. 
yes there will be a variation of 50 to 100 grams even from a single cage that is acceptable yeah yeah so coming to catfish also i will uh, go through very fast uh, this uh, yeah. just for indian uh, aquaculturist clarius garipinus is banned uh, fish in uh, india because it's a uh, uh, highly carnivore and our indian aquaculturists are apprehensive that this will uh, eliminate the native species but just to uh, give you a overview on this it grows very fast in the same period of 150 to 175 days it grows to 1.5 kilo and uh, it's a very fast growing species it is prominently present in all the uh, riverine uh, systems of uh, africa next next slide please uh, this is how it looks like uh, similar to our uh, catfish and um, the dorsal fin is there throughout uh, right from uh, uh, the head till the tail and it has whiskers uh, very slimy uh, but uh, the Ni Ni nigerians not Ni not necessarily nigerian the entire africans make a stew out of this or uh, smoke it and eat they relish this fish very much next slide please uh, I will not go into too many details of this, but uh, more or less the feeding and uh, other thing is similar to uh, tilapia. Only thing is, this is an air breather. So one need not worry about uh, the oxygen levels. Uh, they can come up and breathe air and uh, it can, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, it's a highly carnivorous one. So if you don't feed, it will uh, uh, eat the, uh, smaller or the weaker uh, fish inside the pond. Yeah. yeah. Next, next slide, please. Uh, this can um, stock at uh, ten pieces per meter square, and uh, we can harvest uh, uh, at 150 to 180 days of 1.5 kilo fish, and a, at 85 percent survival and a FCR of 1.2 to 1.3. Next slide, please. Here the cost of production is uh, uh, similar to uh, tilapia, but uh, the, the revenue generation is a little lower, uh, but it makes up for it because there the fish is only 800 grams. Uh, tilapia here it is 1.5 kilo. So by virtue of biomass, it makes up for that uh, thing. Uh, so uh, the the total cost of production is around 1.8 US dollars. Next slide, please. Many of the Nigerians produce this in small, small yathan ponds. Uh, we need to see that uh, there is no abrupt changes in uh, uh, temperatures. Normally, any disease problem can be taken care of by salt treatment or a little bit of uh, uh, copper sulfate uh, does the uh, uh, does solve the problem. Uh, here there is a little bit of protozoan attacks uh, if the water quality is not good. Uh, other than that, nothing else. Next slide, please. The brood stocks. Uh, here the males um, need to be over two years old and uh, uh, females uh, at 1.5 years is okay. And here the females have to be injected with uh, um, uh, hormone a vova prim or vova tide and uh, only then the females will release the eggs and uh, males are sacrificed and their uh, uh, sperms or uh, milt is mixed uh, artificially in the uh, basin to fertilize. Next slide please. Uh, the eggs are incubated in uh, 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 aquariums like this with free flowing uh, water and oxygenation. Next slide, please. Uh, the eggs are uh, uh, like our uh, small uh, globules um, and uh, within uh, 24 to 36 hours, they will all hatch out. Next slide, please. Uh, this is how the small uh, uh, swim up fry looks like. Uh, so the sale prices of catfish uh, vary depending upon the size and it is sold live in Nigeria. 
uh, with little bit of water they will take it in uh, plastic basins to various places and then sell in the market um, uh, the bigger size fish is sold uh, for 2.5 dollars and the lower ones uh, smaller sizes are uh, sold for 1.5 to 1.9 dollars next slide please the catfish sale price is a little lower than the tilapia and 22 and 23 again the catfish sale price has gone up to 1200 naira to 1300 naira because of covid uh, there has been scarcity of uh, meat and uh, hence the fish prices have gone up next slide please we have a lot of uh, fish feed manufacturers uh, each one producing different types of feed, feed uh, whether it is uh, uh, Aqualis, Olam is producing top feeds or scratching. So the different prices with different protein levels is given and uh, prices have been increasing uh, year on year. Uh, that's the same trend even in India, uh, whether it is for shrimp or uh, for uh, uh, fish, the fish, uh, the feed prices has been increasing year on year. Um, in the last uh, uh, four years, we have seen an increase of uh, nearly 20% to vary, due to various reasons. Uh, here, the price increase is uh, almost 40 to 50% in Nigeria, whereas in India, it has been around 20% increase in the last three years. Next slide, please. Uh, this is how the catfish is uh, being graded. Uh, they put little water and take it... Uh, uh, in uh, vehicles. Um, uh, this is a very crude way of taking it unlike the tilapia where you see in oxygen packs. Next slide please. Uh, these sort of vans uh, carry the whole uh, uh, fish. Each vehicle will be carrying around uh, two tons of uh, live catfish uh, uh, to as much as uh, four hours to five hours drive away markets. Uh, and uh, the fish will be live throughout uh, because they have a little bit of uh, water inside and also they are air breathing. Next slide, please. Uh, the catfish is also smoked and dried and uh, sold as such. Uh, this, with, uh, this sort of a, a smoked and dried catfish will have a shelf life of uh, uh, six months to one year and released by Nigerians, uh, Africans, Next slide, please. Uh, this is how uh, freezing of uh, tilapia is done in a blast freezer. Uh, in our company, we used to do like this. Uh, frozen in blast freezer at uh, minus 40 degrees centigrade. It takes around uh, four hours to six hours to freeze. Then it is packed, uh, graded and packed in master cartons of 10 kilo. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the 10 kilo master cartons where the fish is packed and kept uh, in the cold store at minus 20 degrees centigrade. Next slide, please. Now, there are other candidate uh, species for aquaculture in Africa. That is uh, African arowana, uh, snakeheads, uh, knife fish, eel, common carp, Nile perch. Uh, in India too now, uh, you see we are not only culturing Indian major carps, that is Rohu, Katlam, Regal, mm. common carp. We are also doing uh, Clarius Batracus and other mm. pearls. We are also now doing uh, Pangasius, which is a, a catfish, uh, Basa, that is imported from uh, Vietnam. We are also doing now Tilapia. We are also doing... Uh, mm, these, are, these are all the fish which is being done. Even sea bass is being cultured mm. both in water and uh, uh, marine areas. So these are all the fish that uh, India is doing now and India has to work a lot more on other species of aquaculture also. Uh, uh, whereas uh, the export industry is uh, solely focused on uh, venami and black tiger, a little bit, a little bit of uh, mud crab uh, uh, culture is being done where Live mud crab is being exported to Singapore and now to the uh, Middle East. So we, as students, uh, youngsters and research institutes, I would like to say that must focus on 
breeding of various other native species mm. available in India. Oh, I forgot. We are doing a lot of good work on uh, trout, uh, both mm. in Himachal Pradesh as well as in uh, Kashmir. Now it is being done even in northeastern states. Uh, so, uh, trout is another good species, uh, cold water species. Uh, so, we need to look at a lot of fish which can be cultured uh, like uh, reef cod uh, and other species which are easily available so that we have a bigger basket of fish. If you go to mm. China, today they are able to culture over 70 to 75 species of fish. Similarly, oh, in Japan. A large number, yeah. Yes. A huge number, whereas, very huge number. Yes, whereas in India, we are stuck with 10 to 12 species. So we have to, we have a long way to go uh, to do research and then develop the basket of fish, uh, what we can culture. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, this is obscure snakehead. We also have snakeheads in uh, India. Next, next slide, please. This is arowana, which is a very big uh, uh, fish, uh, uh, similar to our katla rohu. They can grow up to 10 kilo, 12 kilo sizes. Next mm -hmm. slide. So this is something uh, which is typical problem to Nigeria, where the imported uh, fish is coming in, uh, smuggled fish from China is coming in, which uh, hinders the aquaculture in uh, Nigeria. Uh, fortunately, in India, we don't have that uh, uh, smuggling of fish, but we do have large amounts of salmon coming in legally. We have large amounts of uh, basa filet coming in, uh, tilapia filet coming into the market legally. So yes, instead of uh, imported fish, forget about salmon, which we cannot do. The rest of the fish we can produce and uh, sell locally. Next slide, please. Yeah. Now we are open to any questions, uh, any doubts that you have. Yeah, so uh, if anybody wants to inquire more about uh, culture systems or aquaculture practices, uh, we would like to have your questions. Please post them into the comments. So meanwhile, sir, uh, the questions come from the comment box. I would like to inquire one thing. Uh, India is a very popular uh, export country for prawn prawn related things. Why are we not becoming the same for fish? Uh, where is the challenge and why we are behind in terms of export of something related to fishes? See, as, as we stand today, a lot of fish from Gujarat, uh, West Bengal, Kerala, um, Tamil Nadu is being exported, but these fish are from sea cod. Sea okay. cod fishes are being taller cod material is being exported, like ribbon fish, reef cod. Uh, uh, you name it. Uh, we have uh, even these uh, crabs being uh, uh, exported. We have tuna being exported. Um, skip skipjack tuna or uh, yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, all are being exported. <coughs> uh, mackerel is being exported, sardines being exported. But as far as aquaculture material is concerned, uh, most of the fish goes for domestic market and uh, mm. uh, people have tried exporting uh, uh, fish uh, like Rohu Katla Mrigal to Indian population in uh, uh, Middle East, uh, Indian population in Europe, uh, there has been some uh, hindrances on that because of uh, uh, what should I say, WTO issues, World Trade uh, Organization issues, permissions and all. Uh, each uh, country, each uh, group like EU tries to protect uh, their own markets. Uh, so we'll, we have a long way to go there also. Uh, but yes, to a certain extent, uh, people have tried exporting it. Um, a little bit is happening, but not to a large extent. Okay, okay. 
so i don't think so there are more questions to it and uh, on that note we can end today's uh, session here it was so wonderful to uh, listen to you you have presented the whole of the culture of two different fishes in such a lucid and simplified way and only a person involved completely can actually do this kind of simplification because you know the in and out of whole of this particular culture so i am so glad that uh, you could take out time out of your busy schedule and deliver this talk for our young minds today and hope they get inspired and as you said more research and work is needed uh, on the local uh, fishes of india uh, they few of them should pick this up and uh, would be inspired to work more in this particular area so on that note uh, uh, all the viewers we are uh, extremely thankful to you for your presence today and uh, uh, for your sharing of the comments and questions in the chat box uh, we would be coming with this kind of talks on and on every month so uh, today was our first uh, part of the lecture series uh, we wish to deliver a similar kind of talks from experts uh, in the coming months as well so keep in touch with our uh, channel do subscribe like and comment our channel so that uh, whatever updates are coming up you uh, you can really get the notification right in time thank you so much sir thank you so much to have you on to our floor thank you thank you namaste thank you thank you sir